Hey there, how's it going? Hope all is well. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at fixing latency issues when we connect our electronic drum kit to our recording software or Easy Drummer on our computer. So if you're experiencing that issue when you hit a drum and you don't hear it for half a second or whatever, and it's very disorienting when you're playing, this is gonna fix those issues for you. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, the main solution for this is gonna work for everybody, right? Whether you use Pro Tools, Studio One, GarageBand, or even just the uh, standalone Easy Drummer software. The main solution that fixes this can work for everybody. I am using Studio One, and there's actually a couple of little cool things that Studio One has, and uh, some tricks under the hood they do that make it even better, and we're gonna dive into those a little bit at the end. And I'm also gonna leave some links in the description down below to the Studio One manual section that talks about this and a video they put out that even goes deep into this if you want to check those things out all right so again the problem is basically we hit a drum and then we don't hear that back for half a second or a quarter second or it just feels very unnatural so you're maybe experiencing something like this all right that's very extreme but you get the idea so we dive in here into my computer again as you can see I'm using studio one I have easy drummer pulled up here and this is where we're getting that that delay. Now this has nothing to do with Easy Drummer or whatever drum software you're using. This is all to do with the settings inside of our soft, our recording software. Or if you're using Easy Drummer standalone, then yeah, it's something to do with <laughs> Easy Drummer, but it's just the settings just like the software. What we want to do is we're going to come up here to Studio One, we're going to hit Preferences, and this is the menu that we're looking for. It's under Audio Setup. and the setting we're looking for here is this device block size and currently it is set to 2048 samples. Now if you're using Pro Tools, it, I think it says buffer size. Um, that's usually a common term for that. And so um, you want to look whatever the setting name is, as long as it's dealing with samples, that's what you're looking for. Now essentially what this buffer size is or device block size is when we're sending data, basically audio to the computer to convert and do all that stuff and handle and process. Um, when we're set at like 2048 samples, we have a very large bucket and so we're sending data and it takes time for that bucket to fill up and once it's filled up, then it sends it off to be processed. So that's going to take a little time and then it goes and gets sent off to process and all that kind of stuff. If we want to make it faster, we need a smaller bucket to fill up. So that way it fills up a little bit and sends it off, fills up a little bit and sends it off. Essentially, that's kind of what's going on. So essentially what we want to do is make that bucket as small as possible. So we come to our device block size or buffer size, and we want to make that smaller. If you notice right here, our input latency is 43 milliseconds, output latency is 46 milliseconds. And if we drop that down, say to 32 uh, samples, you'll notice our input latency is now under one millisecond and our output is just a hair under four, we're at 3.9. So that is significantly faster. And if I hit OK on this, and now I hit my drum, you'll notice it's a lot better. It's a whole lot better. Um, it's not quite perfect. I can still feel a slight delay, but it's a whole lot better. Now, there is no like one buffer size that's gonna work for everybody. A lot of it depends on your computer, how fast it is, how big the session is with all these different plugins and stuff like that going on. So sometimes there's kind of a little bit of a balancing act going on. I find that 32 samples works really well for me most of the time. Sometimes I need to bump it up to 64, but it works really well most of the time. Now, essentially, that's the fix for all the recording software out there, right? You just make that buffer size smaller and your computer can process things a lot faster and you're off to the races. So that's the fix for everybody. Now, if we have Studio One, want to dive in even deeper it's got a trick up its sleeve where it makes that latency even shorter and you know like some of those uh universal audio interfaces they do all the processing there and so there's like near zero latency well studio one kind of does that without having having to have that specific hardware you can use any interface or anything even right now I'm just using a cheap uh, MIDI to USB interface, nothing fancy here. So what we're going to do is right here in Studio One, we're going to want to click on this tab called Processing, and um, you're going to see our standard process, uh, standard 
monitoring latency for audio is 36 milliseconds, instrument is gonna be 40 milliseconds. So that's that delay that we're hearing. Um, so we're getting better than we were, but it's still not fantastic, it's, it could be better. But then we have this over here, it says low latency. So we get 5.23 milliseconds and 7.23 milliseconds on low latency. So how do we take advantage of that low latency within Studio One? Well, essentially, when you have that option, right here, you notice this little Z right here. It says enable low latency monitoring. If you click that, that's going to work for like audio tracks. If you're doing recording vocals or guitar and you want some like EQ or compression or whatever on that, that's what's going to work for that. So very handy, but that's not exactly what we need for this particular situation. So what we need for this situation right now is this one right here. This is on our instruments. Um, section right here and so if you don't see this right here you click this little button right here and that's what opens up that instruments panel and you make sure that's turned on and so now we have that 7.23 milliseconds latency which is going to feel very natural anything under 10 is going to be really good so I could definitely track and record with that no problem now there are a couple things to look out for when you're trying to set all this up. Again, it's gonna be a little bit dependent on your computer and all that kind of stuff and what works for you. So again, if we come back here to our audio setup, you're gonna notice like, if I make this really high, 2048 samples, if we come back over here to processing, it's gonna say not available. So um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that, you know, you can do 64 samples, and then you'll see right here that that becomes available again for us. So right there, it's telling you what your latency is. So the other thing is you have this uh, dropout protection and depending how you set this, uh, 64 samples, that's not gonna make low latency monitoring available for us. So I usually just leave mine at 512, which is on medium for this setting. And that just usually works out fine. You can change it and set it higher or whatever you need to do. You may just have to play around with it a little bit, but as you do that, um, this doesn't change, but you notice that these standard latencies change. But again, I just leave mine here at medium and I have my low latency turned on and we're good to go. All right, so long story short, we wanna reduce that buffer size to get our um, latency down as much as possible. So try to get that buffer down as much as you can and if you're using Studio One then you have that option of that enabling low latency monitoring to get it even faster so make sure you take advantage of that that was one of the selling points for me for Studio One when I was using Pro Tools moving over to this that option really kind of sold me on making things even better because now I can track with plugins on my channels and hear that back. As always, if you have any additional questions, make sure you leave those in the comments down below. Uh, that's where this video came from, was from comment questions. So if you got any more questions, leave those down below. Happy to answer questions. Also, make sure you check out those links to the uh, Studio One user manual and the video that Presonus put out that goes even a little bit further into this. Make sure you check out my website, dadrockandguitars.com for more cool, helpful, useful stuff around songwriting, home studio recording, all that jazz. And uh, check me out on Instagram, dadrockandguitars. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.